In this last series of videos, I'd like to now hone in on the role of emotions in decision making, and particularly uh, in the context of social decisions. So we'll focus on, uh, in this first video, on the role of negative affect in social neuroeconomics. And one affect that's commonly studied, particularly in the context of the ultimatum game, is anger. Let's have a look at one of the first and very famous studies in the field of neuroeconomics, uh, particularly the study here by Alan Sanfi, which was published in Science in 2003. And they used the ultimatum game. Um, here's a timeline of the ultimatum game as it was presented to the participant in the scanner. So imagine you're a participant in the scanner. You first see uh, your partner on this particular trial, and this can vary, so there are different uh, partners that you were faced with or that you were uh, interacting with. And Kelly here makes you an offer of $8 that she keeps, and you only get $2. Obviously, this is uh, a bit of an unfair offer. You then have to decide. Likely, you'll re reject this offer because it's not a very nice offer. Um, she also just got this uh, money from the experimenters, and she should split more fairly with you. Given that you reject it, neither one of you gets anything in this in this ultimatum game, right? Uh, this is how the ultimatum game works. Had you accepted this, then um, Kelly would have gotten $8, and you would have gotten $2. Uh, Obviously, you all know that based on economic theory, it's advantageous to accept it if you are a rational decision maker because uh, $2 right, is better than getting $0. So why would anyone reject this? And it looks like, based on the acceptance rates, that fair offers are accepted. Uh, and these are sort of intermediately fair offers, 7 versus 3. But as soon as it gets unfair and an 80-20 distribution uh, is offered to the person in the scanner, then the acceptance rates go down to almost 30% in the case where you only get $1 as the participant in the in the scanner. So um, there seems to be something that makes people act according to standard economic theory irrationally here, right? And the question might be, what is this? Um, and one answer to this could be that it's a form of altruistic punishment, so you are informing the other person that their behavior is not correct and you're paying a price for this. And so basically you're improving society via this, this uh, punishment. You're giving up something to teach a person a lesson which in the long run should improve society. So this is not how we treat each other, right? That's, that may be your way of thinking. Hence, I'm giving up my $2 in this case. I'm not accepting this, so I'm, I'm not going to get anything. But Kelly loses her $8 and that's a big punishment for her. So she should make a different decision on another trial. Another explanation, alternative explanation to this could be that it's affect driven. So that you being treated unfairly actually triggers an emotional response such as anger, disgust or, or some moral outrage, something like that, that will leave you to then reject this offer. And uh, it's not really driven by altruistic punishment. We can't really dissociate this in this game here because we're not measuring uh, the fairness perception of the offer in particular, but what we can look at is what the neural responses are. And what we can see here is there's this network of regions consisting of right and left anterior insula, anterior singular cortex, and dorsolateral prefrontal cortex that respond um, to unfair offers relative to fair offers. So let's have a look at the activation patterns within the insula here. Uh, at the zero point is the onset of when you find out as the participant in the study whether you received a fair or an unfair offer. And you can see an increased response in this region to, to unfair offers, uh, shown in the black line with the filled squares, and a decreased response to fair offers, showing in the black line with the um, open squares. Same, same activations uh, occur in the left insula. So you can see a clear difference, which is what this uh, statistic here is depicting, between unfair relative to fair offers, shown in this line here. Also note that um, there's a decreased activation when a computer is making a, um, an unfair offer relative, or, well, an unfair or a fair offer. So the insula doesn't seem to take into account when it's a non-social condition. And that's an important aspect, right? Because a computer, uh, even if the offer is unfair itself, uh, cannot be really truly unfair towards you because uh, the computer is just following some algorithm that it's programmed to, to perform. So it's flipping a coin, basically. Uh, so that's not really something that's unfair. Um, so this is um, a nice 
indication that the insular seems to care about particularly unfair offers and particularly in a social context. Um, you can see this also here uh, again when plotting the insular activation for unfair versus fair offers across the different uh, unfairness um, levels uh, presented within the game. So you have the fair uh, offers showing basically no insular response, but then the two unfair offers showing an increased insular response. And what the authors did next to basically hone in their results is to uh, plot the average acceptance rate for each participant across the entire experiment to the contrast value within the insula. So this is the unfair versus fair contrast in the right insula. Um, so the bold contrast shown on the left on the y-axis and uh, acceptance rates on the x-axis. And it shows a negative correlation indicating that people that are generally more accepting uh, regardless of the offer uh, the unfairness of the offer uh, show a large, uh, a smaller response in the interior insula, whereas people that are less um, accepting of, of unfair offers show a larger response in the interior insula. So the interior insula seems to ramp up um, in those people that have lower acceptance rates and, and have more of a, of a reason to reject the offers. Uh, similarly, um, so in addition to making these uh, brain behavior relationships here, we can also look at the neural responses in the insula by binning the responses after the experiment was conducted into those trials that were accepted, so on, in which the participant accepted the offer that was given and those that were rejected. Um, and this is only for the unfair offers, right? So the eight versus two and nine versus one offers. Um, and what we see in the anterior insula here is that there's an increased response on those trials in which, uh, which were eventually rejected during the time that uh, participants were making the decision relative to uh, a decreased, relative decrease response when uh, trials were eventually accepted or offers were eventually accepted on this trial. Uh, this is not shown in the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, so it looks like the activity in the anterior insula distinguishes between those types of trials that are eventually accepted versus rejected, with a larger response in the insula on rejected trials. So this is interesting because it shows um, that there's this involvement of the insula in, in acceptance versus rejection also. So there's quite some evidence in this study that indicates that the insula may be involved in, in rejecting uh, offers that are perceived as unfair by the participant in the scanner. Um, it shows ramped up activation during uh, unfair offers and it shows ramped up activation during offers that are eventually rejected. And it shows also increased activation in participants that tend to reject unfair offers more often. So this is, this is an interesting relationship between insula activation and the unfairness of, of the situation. So the, it seems to be that the insula then um, seems to be encoding the emotional aspect of the un unfair offer. And a reason for why someone might make this conclusion is because the insula has been involved and, and implicated in a number of processes previously that are related to negative affect. It's part of the what you might call the brain's withdrawal system if you look this up on Neurosense, you can you can uh, see the insula uh, being commonly involved in negative affective emotions across a number of meta meta analyses. There, so while that uh, may be a good indication for the insula being involved in these types of negative emotions, particularly in the context of the ultimatum game, this is still just a reverse inference, right? So what we would need to do is assess the emotional responses to these unfair offers of participants on each trial, for instance, and then see if we can correlate the emotional response with the activation of the insula. But there's evidence from other studies that we have looked at prior that indicate that emotional responses do uh, seem to play a role in these kinds of social interactive scenarios. And this is from the Rilling et al. paper in 2008, and this is uh, found somewhere in the supplementary materials, where he shows that people actually do express anger. Um, they are irritated, they are jealous, they feel betrayed, and they are disappointed in conditions where they uh, wish to cooperate, but uh, the other person then actually defected. And this is uh, maybe a parallel scenario in a different game setting 
um, that that shows us that anger seems to play a role. So let's next have a look at whether we can see um, the role of emotions in the context of the ultimatum game and the replication of this study, of the initial uh, Sunface study. While there are quite a few replications of the initial Sunface study um, that implicate the interior insula in fairness uh, in the context of the ultimatum game, um, let me briefly tell you about one of my favorite ones here. Uh, so this is a study by Tabibni et al. published in 2008. And one thing they did in their experimental design was quite nifty, if you will. They <clears throat> dissociated fairness from material utility. So what does this mean? This basically means that you could have two trials that offer, uh, in which your offer within the scanner could, could have been $7. seven dollars. Um, but in one case, the $7 offer is fair. Whereas in the other case, the $7 offer is relatively unfair. So here, the $7 are offered out of a total pot of $15, um, which obviously is relatively fair. It's about 50% of the total endowment that was given to the proposer in this context. In another context, the low fairness context, the $7 offer is part of a $23 endowment. So in this case, it's less than one third. So it's relatively unfair. And the same can also be done for low material utility where 50 cents are offered. So the idea is that <clears throat> the same amount that's offered, so the material utility stays exactly the same here, but the fairness changes by changing the uh, endowment that was given to the proposer. Um, the reason for controlling for material utility is clear because obviously having a trial with higher material utility uh, can also be um, triggering certain neural responses or certain behavioral responses. If you get more money, for instance, even if it's in an unfair context, you could be happier about that amount, uh, and this might be reflected within the brain as well. Another wonderful aspect of their study is that they looked into the behavior results more closely. And one thing that they did is they directly associated happiness ratings um, with fair and or unfair offers. So what they find is that happiness ratings are actually significantly associated with fair offers and contempt ratings are associated with unfair offers on the other hand. And even when they control for the material outcome, these associations remain um, within the regression. So this is basically giving a direct link between an emotional response um, and the fairness of the offer, which, which is something that is important to show in the context of the ultimatum game. Um, so when they then looked at the imaging results, it's shown on the right here, they find that there is a, uh, a set of regions, including the VMPFC, the ventral striatum, and the amygdala, that seem to encode the fairness of the offer that is given to them. So we have high fairness trials showing greater responses, for instance, in the ventral striatum relative to low fairness trials. And the same is observed in the VMPFC and to some extent in the amygdala. So indicating that this is purely driven by fairness and not by the monetary amount that was offered on a given trial. Moreover, Tabibni et al. replicates some of the results from the Sanfi study. So let's look at the insular results here. Um, on the y-axis, they plot the acceptance rate for unfair uh, offers, which is across the entire experiment, right? So higher acceptance rates are up here and lower acceptance rates are down here. And this is the activity in the left anterior insula. Um, and we have higher activity going to the right. So higher activity here is associated with lower acceptance rates because the activity in the Indian insula typically indicates when something's unfair, when something's, um, well, not so good for the participant. Similar to, to the risk studies by Preuschhoff et al, right? Where um, the insula indicates uh, something somewhat av aversive to the participant. And um, so this relationship here persists in the Tabibnia study, but an interesting relationship exists also in the ventrolateral prefrontal cortex that shows this positive relationship between acceptance rates um, with higher activity in the VLPFC being associated with greater acceptance rates across people. So this might indicate that um, the VLPFC here might influence the activity in the insula, which um, in fact the authors confirmed via cor correlation analyses in their study. Well. They're obviously not directional, but there is, an, there is an association between the activity in the VLPFC and the insula that is uh, negatively correlated with each other, indicating that there's some um, potential, well, coactivation occurring between these two regions. <clears throat> One way to 
um, basically interpret these results, and I hinted at this already, is that the interior insula is sort of uh, encoding a negative affect here. So decreased negative affect is associated with increased acceptance. So decreased negative affect. If, obviously, this is a reverse inference again here, so we want to be careful about making these arguments. But it, it is a hypothesis that we can test in future studies, right? So decreased negative affect indicated by the, by the insula would be towards the left and increased acceptance rates obviously go to the top. And the lateral PFC, which has been implicated in, in cognitive control, um, might also show similar activation patterns where increased activity here means increased cognitive control. And this is also associated with increased acceptance rates. So this would mean that we need to engage cognitive control over our emotional parts within the brain to be able to accept an offer like this. Now, again, it, this is just a hypothesis, and this is a fully based on reverse inferences about the associations between these regions um, and other studies that have implicated the insula in, in sort of negative affect or withdrawal and the lateral prefrontal cortex in cognitive control. But it could be something that we can test, obviously, in future studies uh, with more sort of specific experimental designs. So when you look at the behavioral literature, you might find actually some additional evidence for the role of emotions in ultimatum game rejections. Now, this was implicated by the anterior insula activations in the previous studies, but this is sort of indirect evidence, right? We want direct evidence that show that people uh, express emotions when they uh, receive unfair offers. And this is exactly what this study by Xiao and Hauser does. They show that um, in the context of an ultimatum game, where participants are given the possibility to send messages to the proposer, so to express their emotions about um, receiving an unfair offer, uh, we can see that there is a pretty large amount of negative emotions that are being expressed, so about 80%, when the offer is lower than 40%. So it's important to note a couple of things about this, um, about this study. Basically, you receive the offer from the proposer, so that means the, the offer is already done. The emotional expressions do not influence the, the offer in any case. They're just a, a, a form of venting, right? So letting out your emotions uh, and possibly your anger towards the uh, proposer giving you this sort of unfair offers or actually telling the proposer that this is quite positive. Thank you very much. Uh, let's keep it going like this, right? So the messages are sent after the proposer's decision, so they have no strategic benefit. It's just a venting condition. And then there were a number of messages that were, that were taken. So obviously this was recorded, what the, what the participants said. And this was a free-form message that participants were able to, to communicate to the uh, uh, proposer. And uh, the message content was then rated by independent raters. And, well, you can see here already that um, for 40 percent people are about uh, a little bit mixed so it's not really interesting but for offers below 40 percent you see a lot of negative uh, emotions being expressed and for offers above 40 percent you see a lot of positive emotions expressed so this is a quite quite clear picture that people have emotional reactions that are positive if cooperation is taking place and negative if cooperation is not taking place or if people make sort of anti-social initial offers Let's just look at a couple of, of these messages. So you can see that some people say uh, they did accept it, but then they said, thanks for nothing, right? So, but they still accepted it. So this is something that would be hidden um, in typical analyses of the uh, ultimatum game. Uh, here, this one's quite nice. Dude, that's kind of greedy. I'm seriously contemplating designating zero dollars. I was hoping you'd choose uh, D, which is one of the choice options, so giving me more. So we'd both be happy, but whatever. Grrr. So basically negative emotions. Uh, another one here, you're so lucky I'm broke, so I have to accept this offer basically, right? It's not much. and uh, if, if I wasn't broke, I would totally reject this offer. And here, this is a clear rejection. I don't think so, buddy. Um, so again, expressing these emotions, although it was rejected, right? But in the case of, of these sort of on the fence uh, acceptances, we see that people are quite unhappy about having to accept this and express a lot of negative emotions. 
Um, so these are quite uh, nice examples of the types of emotions that participants have. They're not clear about whether this is anger, whether this is some kind of other frustration, but you can clearly see that they're in the negative emotional domain. One of the important aspects about the study was that there were actually two conditions. There was an emotion expression condition that's called EE here and a non no emotion expression condition, uh, NEE here. And in fact, emotion expressions did influence the acceptance rate, which is quite an, an, a nice finding, I think. Uh, so while there's no influence here at the 60-40 or the 90-10 subdivisions, right, because they're basically... Most people will accept these and most people will reject these. So there, there wouldn't be any difference even if you were to express your emotions here. And that's exactly what they're finding. You see increased acceptance rate in the 80-20. So when people are actually on the fence, when there's some money at stake uh, that if you were to reject it, it kind of would hurt. But it also hurts to accept it because it's such an unfair offer. So then in those cases, um, the emotion expression condition actually led to higher um acceptance rates or what's plotted here on the y-axis lower rejection rates right relative to the no emotion expression uh, condition so we are at about 50 to 60 percent um, rejections or above 50 percent in the no emotion expression uh, condition for an 80 per, uh, versus 20 offer so where the where you as the um, responder would receive 20 percent and then make a decision about whether you want to reject this whereas in the emotion expression condition this is significantly reduced to um, about 20 percent um, rejections so this is quite significant and, and i think this is a really interesting finding showing that even just giving participants the ability to vent to express their emotions um, allows them to uh, or, or uh, leads to greater acceptance rates of relatively unfair offers um, so potentially suggesting that in fact one um, motivation behind rejecting an unfair offer is to tell to, to the proposer that, well, I'm really angry here. Uh, this is really unfair, right? But in a financial way. But if you, if you open up another channel of expressing this, this uh, unfairness, um, then acceptance rates actually go up. And so this is kind of an interesting effect showing that if you allow people to, to vent, they may make more rational decisions, um, which in this case, leads to an outcome that is beneficial to them, right? They, they actually end up earning more money in these types of scenarios where they're, where they're allowed to express their emotions in a different channel and then uh, still are allowed to uh, accept those kinds of um, monetary offers, which are inherently unfair, but you now have a way to communicate this to the proposer, this unfairness and the way you feel about it. Now, if we if we could expand this kind of finding to let's say, the political sphere um, where these kinds of emotions might actually influence many of the recent vote outcomes, right? So let's just think about presidential elections in large countries around the world where some candidates uh, are voted for because of frustration because uh, and that frustration remains unexpressed and the only way to express it is by making certain votes. Um, similarly for, as in this example, which is an article by Molly Crockett that summarizes basically the idea that, that I'm presenting to you here uh, in the context of Brexit. Uh, so the, the, the vote then is seen as a, as a form of self-expression, as a form of expressing the anger. But if there was another channel, an independent channel of the vote, then votes might become more rational and actually more self-serving in a sense, right? Uh, because it leads to better outcomes for the voters and also for um, the country as a whole. So this is an interesting idea that I just wanted to leave you with at the end of this uh, video.